Hello again. Yes, quick review now. This time inside number nine. That's right. Uh, series two just started. I just saw it on my iPlayer television over there. So did I like it? Nyeh. It, it was a real nyeh episode, to be honest. It did feel a little bit okay-ish. Um, compared to the first series, I, I got drawn into the first series because I was a bit of a fan of League of Gentlemen. Uh, didn't really get into Psychoville at all. And that put me off inside number nine, series one. There's somebody said Gaz Johnson, said his name, but he does very, very funny uh, Dr. Weasel on YouTube, Lord Lama. Yes, he's very cool. I'll put a link down to what his stuff is there. But he said, you should watch it. It's really good and I did. And it was amazing. Though I must admit, the episode that's completely silent, I can't think what it's called now. I want to call it Silent Night or Quiet Night In. I did think it was a little bit transphobic, if you know uh, exactly what that means. I think that the, uh, without giving away some of the twists, the funny bit of finding out that somebody isn't necessarily the gender they thought they were, and using that as a gag as opposed to using it as, well, a character-based thing, more of a sort of a, oh my goodness, what a shock, was a bit cheap, I felt. Okay, but that was Series 1. All of Series 1 was good, apart from that slight hiccup in that episode. Uh, but this opener to Series 2 wasn't, it was... Yeah, it was okay. To, if anything, it reminded me of the season opener of season one, when they're all trapped inside the cupboard. Sardines. Now, that was a great episode with lots of characters all crammed in to one particular place with humorous social interactions and awkwardness happening. And it worked. People knocked that episode when it first came out. This isn't very good. I really like the episode. Now, this one looked like we were kind of running the same um, beats, doing the same sort of vibe, but it just didn't work. There was, I think within a second of them doing a fart gag and then doing a pooing in the box gag, there wasn't enough atmosphere and there was a little bit too much cliched. I, I could, one, one of the lines uh, about um, acute angina and then later on the guy saying it, it seemed to me like, okay, that's a bad joke. And it's okay for the character to say the bad joke, but it was a bit of a cliche of that character to say that bad joke. So I didn't think we were seeing much depth. Uh, the directing again, I felt really what we should have done is had more atmosphere with this one. But apart from that, I will give it, out of ten, six. Kind of a 5.3, really. I, I was kind of hoping, and it wasn't till the end. Now, I know with these sort of things is they're not going for a deliberate Tales the Unexplained, or is it really called, is it really called Tales the Unexplained? That sounds silly, but it's called Tales the Unexplained or sort of a modern, grounded, in reality, um, outer limits, or twilight zone, you know, so I can't help but use my hands today, tribute to Matt Smith, although Peter Capaldi, very good, fantastically good, really good, he can act, not saying Matt Smith couldn't act, I'm just saying, it's weird, isn't it, Peter, Peter, Peter Capaldi, which is obviously Peter Capaldi's uh, euphemism for his gentleman area, no, uh, basically, what am I talking about, yeah, I, I always think it's a shame that Peter Capaldi didn't win that many awards. He amazing performance. Anyway, I've got off the uh, tangent now. So, yes, Inside Number 9, Episode 1. Not so good. But maybe next week, more creepiness. Maybe?